Welcome. Well, since we're a couple minutes past the hour already, I'll go ahead and get us started. Um, <clears throat> my name is Grace Plummer. I'm the Interim Managing Director of RIEEE, the Research Institute for Environment, Energy, and Economics here at, at Appalachian. And we've done a webinar series every semester for a couple of years now. And this one's actually a little later getting going because we had some changes in leadership and things where I was a bit overwhelmed at the beginning of the semester. But George, a while back, shared the Town of Boone's Community Action uh, or Community Climate Action Plan. And it served as a, a perfect impetus to go ahead and put a couple of webinars together this semester because I had been thinking already about the context in which we're conducting research and supporting the research enterprise. Um, so thank you, George, for that uh, little sure. nudge there. But generally, our webinar series kind of highlight existing and emerging research strengths at Appalachian and um, help us kind of build and showcase some sustainability research capacity here at the university. And we focus on topics that are um, where we already have some teams emerging or we've had some success in securing funding, things of that sort, um, or areas where we think we might want to go as an institution as an institute, um, or uh, sometimes, and you know, I'll, hopefully if I'm able to put the, the next one together for the research enterprise at App, we're working on articulating our areas of excellence. So that might be a space where we can focus a little bit with webinars going forward as well. So for this one, um, like I said, I was thinking about a, a few sessions that could kind of highlight the context in which we're conducting research. So the town, we're a big institution in the middle of a very small town and our impact here, both as population, but also in the built environment and things of that sort <clears throat> is uh, very significant. Um, so George will give us an overview today of the newly released and adopted Community Climate Action Plan. And I've referred to him informally twice now. So let me introduce George Bates. <laughs> Um, he is the Town of Boone Sustainability and, Pre and Special Projects Manager. Um, Boone has a strong commitment to sustainable practices and is committed to climate neutrality and municipal operations by 2030. To achieve this goal, as well as ensuring renewable energy for the entire town by 2050, Boone served George in January of 2021. He comes to Boone with a strong environmental and ri river conservation background. For the last 15 years, George was the executive director of the New River Conservancy. And prior to that, he worked in outdoor experiential education with North Carolina Outward Bound, 4-H, and as an adjunct instructor at Appalachian State. He also served on the Mountain Resources Commission in 2000, from 2009 to 2013. And I think it was probably sometime around 2013, 2014, that I was first introduced to George um, through the New River Conservancy, working with the Institute quite a while ago. So yeah. <laughs> cool. thank you so much for being here today and for giving us an overview of this newly minted plan. And I will turn it over to you. And I, I'll share too that George does have a little time past the hour. Generally with these, we try to wrap up the presentation part within an hour, but we'll stop recording and can stay on for conversation for the for anyone that might like to if there's some good discussion going on. So with that said, I'll go ahead and turn it over to George. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you, Grace. Really appreciate it. Thank you all for being here. I hope to not take the entire hour just presenting to you all. So hopefully we can start dialogue even sooner than that. But uh, I'm going to do my best to share my screen. Let's see how this all goes. Um, Sorry, get back to page one. Okay, so uh, most of what I'm going to focus on is the development of Boone's Community Climate Action Plan and certainly emphasize that this is a local climate action plan. Uh, it is informed by fe state, federal, and international actions on climate action, but this is this is action that we take here at the local community level. Um, and I want basically the presentation will be 
two parts, me giving you a little background as to how Boone, the, the process and the, and the actions that we've taken so far to get to this point. And then I want to, the second half, I want to talk about our relationship with Appalachian State and the actions that we can take together um, and have taken together already to, to address climate change. So... So a brief history is that um, back in 2016, town council passed its first resolution regarding climate change to uh, seek a desire to have to be a 100% renewable energy by 2050. Um, to make a commitment back in 2016 on that level is, is bold and and was had a, a really long time frame. Right, we're talking 34 years at that point. Um, so. To our council's credit, they realized that we probably needed to have some intermediate steps to get to such a bold goal. Um, I think you all would remember, too, why we took this action back in 2016. I mean, the 2015 was the climb, uh, Paris Climate Accord, and um, there was also an election that happened that probably had a lot of influence on this, too. So... In uh, 2019, they passed a new resolution that set these intermediate goals on 10-year timeframes. So the, the 2030 goal was for our municipal operations to be climate neutral by 2030. Our 2040 goal was for municipal operations to be 100% re um, renewable energies by 2040. And then 2050 was again to have the entire community on renewable energies by 2050. Um, I, to my former boss's credit, John Ward was the town manager at the time. He realized that while even though we had, I should say that these two first two resolutions led to the creation of a volunteer sustainability committee that uh, was tasked with achieving these, these goals. And I think John realized that uh, volunteers, while spectacular and wonderful, and they can achieve a lot, um, having a paid person to really focus on this uh, was critical. And so he took the first step to hire my position in 2021, January. I started actually the very end of December of 2020. Um, in this newly created position, Boone did not have a sustainability position at the time. So in, in 21, they hired me as sustainability and special projects manager. So where do we start as far as we have our, we have these guiding resolutions from the council. And so this is what I'm handed and I come on board and decide, okay, let's see what our larger initiatives going on around us that we can certainly no need to reinvent wheels or to start from scratch. So one of the first things I did was look at the state and the state's greenhouse gas emissions inventory that they have. And as you can see, they broke it down into these sectors and you can see the breakdown. And I will just point out to you that this was the inventory as of 2017 was the first one I got to see. The state has revised this inventory since. And um, those first two transportation and electricity have flip-flopped. Transportation is now the largest greenhouse gas emitting sector in North Carolina, followed by electricity and the others. Um, so, but then looking at this, of course, Boone is not, does not have as diverse uh, infrastructure and, and business. And so there's no real industry in Boone. There's no agriculture on Boone. So we obviously needed to narrow the focus of, of this greenhouse gas inventory to what was truly applicable here in Boone. So that was where we decided to start. So really quickly um i'm gonna go into more detail on all these things but this was this kind of shows you the timeline and the general actions taken since 2021 to get us to this adoption here in 2024. so we started i don't have a slide for it let me go back and say we started with an internal high level done by myself and some interns looking at what our greenhouse gas inventory was. I, I would not say it was extremely overly scientific. I would not say that it was done with any robustness. It was just a, a placeholder, a way to start to help us understand in general where our greenhouse gases were coming from 
as a, as a town. Um, so that's where we started. And then realized quickly that we needed to reach out to the community, start to gain perspective from the community. So we released our very first climate opinion survey. This was more geared around um, just general opinions on climate and climate change related um, concerns. And, and we got, it was, it was a pretty across the board reaction and, and feedback that we got from the community. It was, it was really interesting. Um, but again, we realized that we needed to have a far more robust and, and well-documented inventory of greenhouse gases that were done in, in the town. And, uh, as I, um, got to know more of my colleagues throughout the state and throughout the Southeast, Saboon is a member of what is called the Southeast Sustainability Directors Network, uh, which is a fabulous organization. It works in, a, I think it's about 14 states from uh, Virginia all the way down to Arkansas and uh, Louisiana and all states in between. Um, so they, they have regular meetings, quarterly meetings on that scale. And then we have a monthly meeting with North Carolina based sustainability directors uh, throughout all the cities in North Carolina. And that's where I started to get really exposed to some of these other resources. So ICLE, uh, that acronym up there at the top left, that's how it's pronounced is ICLE. They are an international based organization that has, uh, that represents local governments all over the world. Uh, with regards to climate change. And they have a tool called ClearPath that is an online um, tool that helps us manage our greenhouse gases inventory and shows helps us model um, possible changes based on actions and also obviously just continue to record what the actual greenhouse gas inventories are for a community. So we, we now use this tool and work with, Clear, uh, with ICLEI on the management of this, this database and information. So the next, another action we took was we realized we needed a, a landing place on the web, on our website for the community climate action plan and the activities going on around the community climate action plan while it was being developed. There needed to be a place for community members to go to, to learn more. So we, Laney on my, our staff, uh, developed this website. And so this, this is still live today. You can go there right now. It's uh, townofboon.net slash CCAP. Um, and that URL will be showing later on too. But um, this is where our community climate action plan lives and it documents, it has some of the documentation of the actions taken so far and how we got here. Um, of course, one of the other ways we did besides online surveys was to have public meetings and gain public feedback. So we did three of these. We did two. We did one at the uh, uh, Watauga County Ag Center over, over by on the west side of town. This one here is in our town council chambers on Blown Rock Road where our police station is. And then we did one more on campus in October. So this one was in July. We had the first one was in June of, of 23. The next one was in July. And then uh, October of uh, 23 was on campus in partnership with the Office of Sustainability, Lee Ball's office at the time. Mike's now. <laughs> um, so we did. And then. In an effort to really make sure we reached as many people as possible, we did one more online survey. Uh, this is toward the end of the development of the cat plan, so we had, it was far more it was far more along in the process, and we had more um, we could get more direct feedback on the how the document was panning out and and what the actions that were identified in the document. So I do all this to say that it was a pretty robust process a public and community engagement to, to guide and lead this, you know, this community climate action plan. I stress all the time that community is the one of the key words. It's critical. This was community developed 
it's meant for the community. These are, there are actions in this plan that the town can take as a municipality. There's a whole section on what we do as a municipality internally, but the bulk of the plan addresses the 20,000 people that make up our entire community, including App State. So this led to the adoption of this document in, in March of this just barely a month ago, not even a month ago, this document has finally been formally adopted by our town council. And I just want to point out that the general, uh, I talked about some of the goals of the resolutions prior. These goals have now been modified based on the adoption of this document. And you can see them in those three bubbles over there on the uh, top right. So we still stick to seeking to be carbon neutral in municipal operations by 2030. But the middle one is now to see a 54% reduction below 2020 levels by 2030 of community-wide greenhouse gas emissions. And I'll go into more detail on that, but that's probably the biggest change in here. And then of course, it still remains that we seek to be community-wide climate neutrality by 2050. So what are emissions? This is the best representation of the community's emissions as of 2020. Be, be make sure I, I'm very clear that this was this inventory was done based on 2020 numbers, and all actions that we're tracking are reductions from 2020. Um, so again, that 54% reduction I mentioned earlier is based on these numbers from from 2020. Our largest emitting sector mimics the states in that transportation is the largest sector. Almost half of the greenhouse gases emitted in our community come from vehicles. Um, if you add up the uh, 26 and the 14, that's effectively, that's buildings. So the 26 is commercial structures and re um, multifamily residences and things of that nature. And then 14% are, are true residential, mostly single family, but not exclusively single family. It could be duplexes and things of that nature. So 40% um, effectively is, is uh, um, what we'll call static energy buildings. And then 12%, and this, this is interesting, and I'll show this later. Um, I'm sorry, I'm getting those two backwards. The 12 and the 26 are the buildings and the uh, commercial and then the 14 at the bottom is our water and wastewater system. So the town, of course, manages and operates the water system throughout town. We treat all the wastewater. While App State has its own water supply, we treat all the wastewater off of campus. So that's why that number is so large. It's effectively all the wastewater throughout the entire town from every structure in town runs through our wastewater treatment plant. Um, and you're going to see in a second the impact of some actions the town took to, to really reduce that. But those three sectors, so static buildings, transportation, and water wastewater are our three largest. The other sectors you can barely find on this pie chart. So waste reduction, fugitive emissions, other things of that nature are, are so small, they, they barely show up. I don't want to make any assumptions on this presentation. I, I like to share this because greenhouse gas emissions are measured in a unique unit, and that would be metric tons of what we're, uh, the international community calls CO2E. So they take all greenhouse gases like methane and find an equivalent relationship with carbon. Carbon, of course, being the largest, carbon dioxide, I should say, is the largest greenhouse gas um, by by volume and there are many other gases that are greenhouse gases but they're much smaller and they're measured in different ways so the international community has a formula to equate all other greenhouse gas emissions to carbon so everything uh, on our ghg inventory is measured in car what the e is so co2 e carbon equivalent is effectively um what they do. And then a metric ton sounds like it's just not a number. I don't think any of us have ever really dealt with before. So it's it doesn't feel really tangible. So I like this diagram to make it more tangible. 
And that is effectively that a metric ton is approximately a cube that is 27 feet by 27 feet by 27 feet, or approximately the size of a 1400 square foot two-story home. So if you can imagine, that's what um, our emissions look like uh, in volume. And you can see that in 2020, our entire community greenhouse gas emissions were 275,770 metric tons of CO2E. So it's a little daunting to think that just our little community of Boone is sending nearly 300,000, the equivalent of 300,000 14 square foot, 1400 square foot homes up into our atmosphere on an annual basis. Um, so that's, that, but that is, a, that is essentially what is happening. And so this is what we're trying to mitigate. This graph represents what we call business as usual. So even if we take absolutely no effort, make no effort in the community of Boone to mitigate climate change or mitigate our, our greenhouse gas emissions, we will see a reduction. And um, as you can see here, there will be almost a 70,000 70, uh, metric ton reduction. And this is because there are actions going on around us that are eliminating greenhouse gas emissions. Our grid is getting greener. Um, it's not happening at the rate any of us want. We want it to be much faster, but it is absolutely getting greener, and that's primarily the action. The other action is that the adoption of electric vehicles is happening. Um, I just saw a recent article showing that uh, North Carolina has now tipped 85,000 electric vehicles registered in the state. Uh, that is ahead of Governor Cooper's original Executive Order 80, where he wanted um, uh, 80,000 electric vehicles by 2025. So here we are, early 2024 or mid 2024, and we've already tipped 85,000 uh, electric vehicles. So there are actions happening around us, uh, whether we promote them or not. So that the, this graph represents exactly that, that, that by 2030, we would be at 208,000 metric tons of greenhouse gases if we didn't make any serious effort. But I would like to say that we are going to make a very serious effort. I think, and together, App State and, and Boone are going to make a very serious effort to reduce this even further. So this is where we stand right now. Um, if you look at 22 and 23 and 24 on this graph, you can see a pretty significant drop in 2022. And, and the reason for that drop is that the town of Boone uh, opted to purchase 100% renewable energy from our power providers for our municipal operations. And if you look at that bottom light blue line or part of the chart, as I said, uh, Moon operates the community's wastewater treatment plant. And that blue line represents the wastewater treatment plant. And so it is now run 100% on renewable energy. That is why that drop is so significant. It's approximately 15% of the community's greenhouse gas emissions dropped in February of 22 when we fully adopted that and purchased 100% renewable energy um, from both New River Light and Power and Blue Ridge Energy. And just as a point, the wastewater treatment plant that we operate is actually on Blue Ridge's grid. Um, the renewable energy that we buy from Blue Ridge is 100% solar, so that wastewater treatment plant is run on 100% solar energy, which is super cool to say. Um, and approximately 75% of the municipal energy we buy is from, because you, as you would imagine, the, the wastewater treatment plant is our largest single consumer. Uh, the action that we do consumes about uh, 500, uh, five gigatons, uh, five, sorry five gigawatt hours of energy on an annual basis. And so uh, that is now 100% solar. And then, of course, we buy the hydropower from New River Light and Power for other operations. Our, our water treatment facility is actually on, on uh, New River Light and Power. So the long and the short of it is, by the town purchasing 100% renewable energy in 22, we reduced the community's greenhouse gas emissions by 15, a little over 15%. And 
we did this, of course, in 2022, before we ever adopted a community climate action plan or even a, a municipal climate action plan. And it was really because we saw we we this has been guiding us ever since I got there. You know, I started looking at ways to achieve neutrality. And um, so these five actions have been guiding my work ever since I started. Um, and before we even had the, the, the plans in place. Uh, but reducing, changing our energy consumed, of course, is what we just discussed. So purchasing renewable energy. And then now we're working on things like taking control of demand, meaning that you're trying to run, if you have actions or activities that are highly energy intensive and they can be run in the off hours and the wee hours of the morning when energy is cheaper, um, that's better for the grid, it's better for the utilities. Reducing consumption, of course, we all, this is probably the one we know the most of. It's, you know, cocking your windows, insulating your buildings, changing out, you know, appliances, all these things. That's energy efficiency right there. Um, seeking to generate locally. So installing new solar in town, wherever we can is, is ongoing. And then uh, while I don't like the last one, it is a critical tool in the toolbox. And that is to purchase offsets. Um, which is sort of what we're doing from the utilities right now in our purchase of the, the uh, renewable energies. But in this case, it's not exactly that because we are purchasing the energy and the, the green component of the energy from our utilities. So it's really more in the number one category than it is in the number five category. But in general, just wanted to say these are the five actions that I've been working off of to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions in the community. Oop. Um, another thing I wanted to point out that Ickley really made, had this great graphic to, to represent because, you know, I identified early that there are all kinds of actions, right, around sustainability and greenhouse gas emissions. And so things like waste reduction and composting and recycling, and these are all fabulously wonderful actions and they should obviously continue to be encouraged, but the amount, as, as you saw on the pie chart, the amount of greenhouse gas reduction from those activities is, is pretty small compared to decarbonizing our grid, electrifying our buildings. So when I say that, I mean, and I'm working on this and I know App State is working on this, we gotta convert any heat sources that we currently operate that are using fossil fuels. So natural gas, oil, things of that nature, kerosene, we need to start to eliminate those, those heat sources and change them over to electric-based heat pumps and, and the, the like. And then, of course, transportation, as we talked about. We need to start to transition our fleets and encourage other modes of moving around town that don't require burning fossil fuels uh, in gasoline vehicles. But So they break these actions out into these two sectors. Accelerating actions are on the left and then supporting actions on the right. So again, we're not saying that, we're not ignoring those other actions on the right, we just acknowledge that their contribution to greenhouse gas reduction is less, and so we're focusing a lot more energy on those accelerating actions. All right, so that was the whole development of our climate action plan, and now I wanna talk about how the two of us can align and work together uh, to tackle this, these problems. I certainly want to acknowledge, and Grace pointed it out, that uh, I always find it ironic that Asheville, a community of nearly 100,000 people, has a university of less than 4,000 people, and Boone, a community of 20,000 people, has a university of 20,000 people. <laughs> and so it's a, it's a very interesting uh, place we find ourselves compared to other communities. Um, and and to, again, to Grace's point, as you can see by this graph, App State accounts for 20% of the greenhouse gas emissions. So of that 275,000 metric tons of greenhouse gas emissions that we recorded in 2020, App State accounted for 20%. And I also want to put a little caveat here. This is, these are the reported greenhouse gas emissions from campus. Um, they don't, and they do include some other additional actions like travel abroad and other things, but 
it does not account for all the students that live in the community and are the faculty who don't live on campus, obviously, and live in the community. They're all in that 78%, that green, the big monster green chunk that is the community of Boone. So um, as you can see, the little tiny sliver is the municipality. So that's our, the wastewater treatment plant, the fire, fire police, uh, town hall, the, all those actions that uh, our snow plows and our uh, public works, our streets is barely, is, uh, again, we're, we're a tiny bit of the greenhouse gas emissions of the entire community. Less than 2% of the community-wide greenhouse gases come from municipal operations, again, 20% from App State operations on campus, and then 78% um, around the rest of the community. So what's the first and best thing we can do? And that's to align our community climate action plans or our climate action plans, let me say. So Boone has a community climate action plan and Appalachian has its climate action plan. And this document right now is called APCAP 1.0. And I know there's an effort right now to migrate to 2.0. So this is a wonderful time and a wonderful opportunity for us to be in dialogue and seeking to better align both of our actions and our community-wide action with the university's actions and, and really leverage those activities for greater impact. And I'm gonna use the goals and actions out of the town's community climate action plan. They're um, done in a way that may be a little simpler, but again, we're, you know, cause we're, we're talking to the entire community, everybody who lives in the community and works in the community. So it, the way we speak about it is a little different than the, the university does um, to its community. So I, I'm just going to, they, they do align in many ways and I, and I will point them out as, as we move forward. But when it comes to stationary energy, buildings and such, these are the five priority actions in the Boone Community Climate Action Plan to achieve uh, the, the reduction, that 54% reduction in GHG by 2030. Uh, so the first one addresses that electrification issue that we talked about, changing all of the heat sources from fuel-based to heat pump-based heat pump sources. Uh, SE2 is to see an additional three megawatts of distributed energy or renewable energy installed in our community by 2030. And then SE3 is to continue to work with our utilities to improve uh, the amount of renewables on the grid. And uh, we're seeking a 60% um, increase in renewables or 6% lower emissions, I should say, by 2030 as compared to 2020 on the grid. And, you know, we're helped in some ways by larger um, actions. So, our North Carolina legislature passed uh, HB uh, 251, and it um, is forcing Duke to reduce emissions by 50% by 2030. I know they probably won't actually achieve that, but the fact that they're being pressed to do that is, is extremely helpful. And so between that and what our local utilities, Blue Ridge Energy and New River Light and Power can do. I, this 60% reduced emissions by 2030 feels like an achievable goal, which is why we set it. And we continue to negotiate and, and work hard with both New River Light and Power, Blue Ridge Energy. And then while I don't directly negotiate with Duke, again, I, we are members of the Southeast and North Carolina Sustainability Directors Network. I love standing on the shoulders of the Charlottes and the Raleigh's and the Greensboro's of the world who do directly negotiate with Duke on these reduction actions. And we support them every, every step of the way. Um, so then SE4, of course, is to um, transition 50% of our community, uh, effectively customers of our local utilities. Both local utilities offer what's called a green tariff. And I'll talk about that in a minute, a little bit more. But any one of us can purchase renewable energy. I do at my own house from Blue Ridge Energy. I buy one. Uh, I offset 100% of the energy I consume at my house. 
with their brighter futures program. So I'm buying solar power off of Blue Ridge Energy to offset my electric consumption at my home. And I'm trying to encourage everybody or at least 50% of our community to do the same by 2030. And then the final is the energy efficiency in all buildings. So that again is not just the heat pumps as an SE1, but tightening up the buildings, helping, you know, encouraging people to, um, and, and mostly again, these multifamily homes that we have in Boone and trying to get them to better the older ones, not the newer ones, but the, the older ones to, to modernize, um, to tighten up the buildings, to add insulation, to cock windows, to do all kinds of different small actions that will help the efficiency of the building. So again, I talked a little bit about this, but both of our utilities offer renewable energy programs. So if you're a New River Light and Power customer, you can purchase 100% renewable energy from New River Light and Power. And if you're a Blue Ridge Energy customer, you can purchase 100% renewable energy from them. Um, they call it the Brighter Future program that's on the right. And then of course, New River Light and Power's Green Power program on the left. And they both do it because it's, this is unique, or I shouldn't say unique. It's It makes the, these programs a little bit cumbersome in the way they've had to do it. So you, you have to purchase it as a, it's a premium product. It is, they're both effectively two cents per kilowatt hour more than your traditional energy. So if you're spending 10 cents a kilowatt hour on energy right now from one of these providers, then if you buy into these programs, you, you're effectively spending 12 cents per kilowatt hour, but you're, but you are purchasing 100% renewable energy and, um, new river light and powers program basically does it in 250 kilowatt hour blocks. So they can't, this is the other thing that's awkward. They can't tie it directly to your bill. They can't just say, okay, you, you consume 750 kilowatt hours this month. We're going to charge you two cents more per 750 kilowatt hours. And, and add that to your bill. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. You have to try to estimate what your consumption is on a monthly basis. And both, both of these utilities have online tools to show you what your last 12 months or your last multiple years of consumption is. So you can get a pretty darn good sense of what your annual and monthly, that, therefore average monthly consumption is um, from the utilities. And then you can purchase the offsets accordingly. So the, again, the new line power is 250 kilowatt hour blocks. So if you consume 750 kilowatt hours a month on an average, you purchase three of those blocks and they cost $5 a block, which is that two cents per kilowatt hour. And, and so that would be an additional $15 a month uh, to offset that. And then the same is true for uh, Blue Ridge Energy, except they do it in smaller blocks. They do it in hundred kilowatt hour blocks. So again, that same 750, you couldn't buy half a block. So you'd have to either choose 700 or 800, however you wanted to do it. But then, you know, it would be, it would be that multiple of two. It's a, it's a dollar, it's a dollar, uh, it's $2 per hundred or effectively it's actually a dollar 90 for Blue Ridge Energy per hundred kilowatt hour. Um, so Having said that, and having knowing that we can purchase renewable energy directly, we also want to encourage the development of renewable energies right here in our community. This is brand new for our municipality. We are just getting started. Well, ironically, the very first one that we had is the one in the Depot Street lot, that lower left-hand image right there, is a small solar array, 20-ish 20, 20 kilowatt hour solar array that we have over our electric vehicle car chargers uh, in the Depot Street lot. And that's been there since 2015. Um, and we unfortunately haven't installed anything since then until now. So those other two pictures show a 22 and a half K system that we're installing on some picnic shelters out at the Clawson Burnley wetland. This is uh, the, the uh, part of the greenway behind the Watauga County Rec Center where all the ball fields are. Um, so that, that is, we're still in the, that hasn't actually been even tied to the grid yet. The installation is 100% complete. We're working with New River Light and Power to get a meter installed out there, and that should go live. We're hoping actually by Earth Day, uh, which for us is uh, Friday, April 19th. 
And then App State, of course, has been installing solar on campus. So the top image and the lower left image is the Levine Health Services building out there um, near the hospital. That's a, a fairly large solar installation on top of that building. And then the lower picture, forgive the fuzziness, I was cropping and cutting and pasting. Um, the lower picture is a 100K system behind the data center off of Dale Street out there off of State Farm Road. Um, and then, of course, there are multiple other installations on campus. And this table shows the amount of solar that is currently installed in Bend. So that, again, the town only has two systems right now. We're working hard to improve that, but we have two for that are 34 um, kilowatt hours. And the university has five installations that amount to 211 kilowatts. And the residential community, there are 14 installations out there right now. There are 51 kilowatts and the commercial Buildings, we have seven installations out there that are 36 kilowatts. So in total, we have a little over three, you know, 330 kilowatts of solar installed in Boone right now. And if you recall, the goal is three megawatts. So we got a long way to go. We got a lot of work to do <laughs> to install a lot more solar. And, and, and the irony of that is, there are multiple projects that if they come to fruition could, could hit that number by themselves in a single project or in a couple of projects. So it, it's a fickle environment that we can chip away at it in these little tiny systems and it will take us a really long time, or we can take advantage of wherever we can put the large systems and get those installed and, and really hit that number out of the park. So I'm working on both. Um, there is one project I'm working on that could hit that three megawatt number by itself. I don't know that it'll happen, but we're working on it. Uh, oops, sorry. All right, let's transition from stationary energy to transportation because this one, this one's going to be much, much harder uh, because it, it does involve all the vehicles in the town of Boone. But these are the five goals that we set in Boone's Community Climate Action Plan to try to do everything we can to reduce uh, the impacts of our vehicles on our greenhouse gas emissions. So first of all, the VMT, forgive that acronym, that means stands for Vehicle Miles Traveled. Um, we need to reduce that to achieve these goals and so reducing vmt by any means necessary so improving our mass transit or improving ridership on the apple cart improving bike and pedestrian infrastructure so more people feel safe and comfortable moving around town without a vehicle those are those are critical things that the town needs to to work on to to get people out of vehicles and and reduce the the transit by gas vehicles um, and then find ways to improve electric vehicle adoption and because driving an EV would be considered the same as, as riding, you know, it doesn't, not from a traffic perspective, I'm not speaking from, a I'm only speaking from a greenhouse gas emissions perspective, but driving an electric vehicle, of course, uh, is, is uh, zero emissions at the vehicle. And then as we green our grid, it reduces. So therefore we, we get that, we gain that reduction. Um, I should also point out that every electric vehicle charger that the town operates is still is run on that 100% renewable energy. So if you charge your car in Depot Street lot, you are charging a car with 100% renewable energy. So just pointing that out. Um, T3 is to increase that infrastructure I just talked about. So the ways to improve adoption in T2 is to make sure that people know they have enough robust charging opportunities throughout town to make them feel comfortable to drive these electric vehicles. Um, T4 is to collaborate with our institutional partners, of course, App State being the largest, and work on fleet um, modifications. And App State is are probably leads the way, for, well, I would say absolutely leads the way um, amongst all of our institutional partners right now in the town of Boone with fleet conversion. But we all have a long, long way to go on that. And then the final one is just, uh, I don't think I've gotten a more visceral response to the negative until I start talking about people's cars. I mean, 
we own our cars. Like, I mean, it's like, you know, I'm, a, I'm attacking their moms and apple pie and the American flag. I mean, it's incredible how visceral our cars are and how critical they are to our daily operations and our daily functions. So I get that. So we need to continue to help people feel comfortable not always relying on the car every single time they want to go someplace. And that, that's going to take a lot of work. I, you know, we own that. We know that's a lot of work involved. So we're at the University of Town working together. Uh, the Apple Cart is absolutely the best example of this. And, uh, you know, the university does the heavy lifting here. You, the university is the primary sponsor, but the town supports Apple Cart. And this, of course, is the very first electric bus in the town of Boone. Um, and we're excited. We were excited to do our part. Uh, we helped uh, Apple Cart increase the charging infrastructure over there to make this bus more functional for them. Um, and they, the great news is they recently received another grant to, that will enable them ultimately to buy four more electric buses. So sometime in the near future, I say near future, probably five years, um, we'll have as many as five electric buses riding around town. Um, so this, this, the most challenging thing with Apple Cart is sad in that um, they have a hard time hiring drivers. They, they're really struggling to hire drivers and that is actually the most limiting factor on routes and the number of routes and the hours of operations for Apple Cart is, is how many drivers they can hire. And that, that's a big challenge right now is the workforce. We all struggle. I know App State has an enormous amount of job openings on campus. We can't fill our open enrollment. And I'm sure I know the county has struggles. It, it's just a weird environment that we work in right now. But Apple Card is feeling this pain and, and having a hard time hiring drivers. So if you know anybody that would love to drive a bus, they're hired. <laughs> um, so the town has been uh, working hard to convert our fleet. Uh, the police actually probably uh, have the most. So we have we only have two electric vehicles, and that is you see one up there. That's the vehicle I can drive, and uh, my counterpart drives uh, in the sustainability program in the administration of town of Boone. That's the Chevy Bolt up there. Uh, but otherwise, the town. Uh, has many hybrid vehicles, and our police, again, have the largest fleet of hybrid vehicles uh, of, of the fleet that we have in town. Um, it's not to say that public works and fire don't also have some, some hybrids, but the police have about 22 hybrid vehicles at the moment. And what we found, and the biggest challenge is that is not the desire or any resistance by our staff. It is that, so that... Uh, Cruiser, the, the SUV cruiser that you see up on the right side is, is um, a Ford product. It's called a Ford. It's an interceptor, uh, but it's a hybrid vehicle. It's built on the Ford Explorer platform. We had five order on order just recently, and um, Ford called us and told us that we're never, they, we're, they're never going to ship those cars to us. And it's because they have such production reductions and they have bigger customers and clients and that they serve and we're just chump change. And so they can tell us, sorry. So we're back now forced to buy fuel based police vehicles because we desperately we have to have the vehicles and we don't have a manufacturer yet that can provide us uh, with the hybrids. So that's that's really unfortunate. And uh, App State again is leading us in this. And, you know, y'all have a few Teslas in the police force. I have yet to convince my police chief that a Tesla is a functional police vehicle and that's fair. Um, but, you know, we all need to find, and, and I keep hoping these manufacturers are gonna continue to improve these vehicles to a point where, you know, our emergency management and our, our law enforcement feel comfortable using these vehicles that that's probably the biggest challenge and one of the most ironic challenges of this is that for boone and I, it may be the same is true i don't know exactly for app state but for boone all of our police folks drive their vehicles home and many of our police folks most of our police folks do not live in the town of boone so we we would have electric vehicles driving to 
you know, Wilkesboro or down into Caldwell County, Granite Falls, places like that. So, you know, this officer would be driving an electric vehicle from home to work and, and um, could use as many as 50 miles of electricity before they even get to work. And so that's, that's a challenge. And then figuring out how to install or provide electric charging infrastructure at private homes is proving to be quite a challenge for us. We, we continue to explore what is possible there. But for those, those employees who get to drive their vehicles home, if it's an electric vehicle, we do need to figure out how to enable them to charge at their house um, and how to compensate them again then for the electricity consumed at the house. So it, it's amazing how complicated this stuff gets, how quickly it gets complicated. Um, George, I just wanted to give a quick time check. We have about quick time time quick. Ten minutes. Did I talk that long? I'm sorry. I'll move on. Thank you. <laughs> um, this is a this is a quick representation of the uh, EV charging infrastructure in Boone. And so there's a large cluster right here in downtown. These are all town owned EV chargers. And this one out here in the middle of nowhere is in our JC Park. Those are all town owned EV charging infrastructure that's publicly available and free to use to the public. Um, App State, I apologize, we're missing one bubble here. So this is the Legend parking lot here that has chargers there. And then of course the River Street parking deck has chargers in it. And then all these others are actually our community stepping up, mostly the business community, a lot of hotels and other things, installing car chargers at, at their uh, places of business. So there's the quick representation, legends on the top, and then a couple of uh, our municipal car chargers, the Depot Street lot, and then in front of the post office downtown. This is another opportunity that I really look forward to trying to explore with App State more and, and beyond App State, the county as well. So this is the, obviously the State Farm parking lot um, near the rec near the rec center and the ball fields and uh, the facilities management um, on App State. But th the purpose of this is to represent what a park and ride could be. You know, the Apple cart serves this parking lot. Right now, it, it is limited to App State folks, but is there a way we could negotiate opportunities for uh, commuters to be able to use this lot to park here, jump on the Apple cart and go to work elsewhere in town that that's a critical piece that's another way to reduce vehicle miles traveled in town and take pressure off of parking and all kinds and traffic and all kinds of other things so i just have that as a placeholder and a representative for that and then of course i don't want to ignore the supporting actions i, I did focus heavily on those accelerating actions but these are other actions that the town and the university are working on together uh, we are right now actively eradicating invasives along the Greenway. Um, we have partnered on and will continue to partner on multiple water quality and flood mitigation projects between the town and the university. And then we together work on waste reduction actions to zero waste events, composting and other things. And Grace, I'll stop there then. That's my last slide. Uh, well, here's the, uh, here's the URLs for the Town of Boone's Climate Action Plan and the University's APCAP 1, if you have not had an opportunity to check that out. Thank you, George. And I did drop, um, not directly to the APCAP, um, but uh, versions of those URLs in the chat for everybody, if you're looking for them. Perfect. Excellent. Um, so I am going, just for the benefit of Watch Facts on YouTube, I will thank George for being here today and everybody that joined live and um, just encourage you to look for some more uh, iterations of RHA webinars in the future and go ahead and stop recording.